Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. This week's Photo of the Week was created by Kel, who's a beginning photographer from Georgia. In her backstory, Kel says, this image was taken at a local workshop to the Southeastern Rail Museum. She said she really wanted to bring out the old school charm of this lounge area of a 1930s Pullman car. Kel shot this with a Canon 50D, an effective focal length of 21 millimeters, and this is an HDR process shot, so the exposure trio looks like this, ISO 100, F8, and then four different exposures using shutter speed to bracket, so 3 seconds, 11 seconds, 16 seconds, and 32 seconds. Kel then used photomatics to take the four bracketed exposures and turn those into an HDR blend final editing and Lightroom 3. If you don't know about HDR, it stands for High Dynamic Range, and we do exactly what Kel has done here. We shoot a series of exposures, and we're going to take that bracket of exposures and then blend them to express in one image a much greater dynamic range or relationship from the darkest thing that was in the scene when we were shooting to the brightest thing we're able to express in one frame a much greater range from light to dark than the camera could ever see in one frame. One of the things I love about Kel's image is the HDR processing. I do get a really powerful sense here of detail even in the lights themselves and I get a really beautiful sense of some nice shadow detail but then I also have some shadows that completely go to black so even though I know the dynamic range has been extended here I still get a sense to my way of thinking of a naturalistic feel relative to the idea of photographic contrast. I don't have anything against extreme HDR, but I do believe that depending on the context, that kind of processing can end up, if you're presenting your image as a photograph, it can end up being so far away from what is considered to be normal photographic contrast that your processing will draw more attention than the imagery of the shot. I really enjoy the feel here of the HDR work that has been done. So many things that I love about Cal's image. You know, one of the most important things in photography is light. And not only has Cal extended the dynamic range here, she's left us with an image that has a really beautiful sense of movement of light. I love the feeling of pools of light that are surrounded by darker areas. That's kind of the way my mind thinks about seeing these kinds of interior spaces. I absolutely love the way these shadows are moving across the floor to break up this space and give it more depth. I love the luminous quality of the windows as if they are much brighter than the inside, which would be true, but then there's still subtle detail out here in the windows and that has a really beautiful feel to it just relative to my memory and experience of being and interior spaces. Um, another thing that I really enjoy about the light is I think the light and the movement of shadows in this shot is helping this image to have a lot of depth even though Cal has just centered herself on one of the dominant ideas in the back of the room. So she's set up centered on this opening and then this doorway and is shooting straight in and these lines are moving straight in. That could tend to flatten things out but I really think these shadows and the movement of light is helping to give me a feeling that there actually is a third dimension in this image and I'm moving through the space. I think another detail here that's really helping to add to that and it's keeping this straight in here and then hitting this wall from flattening the image out is the inclusion of this area right up here above the molding. It suggests a space beyond the far wall and I think it really helps to give me a feeling in the image of near, middle, far, and then even farther than that. If you cover that area up with your hand right now, to me it's just sort of amazing what a flattening effect that would have on the image, which leads me to make another suggestion in today's video. Um, when I am shooting a subject so much of the time, I will shoot a quick shot, some test shots, and then if I start to frame, maybe get on the tripod, a lot of times I will shoot loose and then kind of work my way in. And in architecture where you have so many different things that can be competing for each other, this is something that I shot commercially. If we shoot a little too loose and need to crop in, we can. If we shoot too tight and want to get more information, that could be a lot more difficult. So I just encourage you to think about the idea of giving yourself choices from loose to tight when you're shooting um, a room like this. And here's where a wide zoom could really be helpful to do that kind of work.
there are some really beautiful rhythms in this image that are helping to unify. And one of the things that's working in Kel's favor here is she is shooting a space that has been styled. And so there's a styling here in terms of repetition of ideas that's beautiful. One of the things I absolutely love is the way the structure of the carpet is rhyming. General structure in terms of the squares and rectangles that are being expressed by openings in the walls and the windows and doorways. One of my favorite things about Kel's image, we haven't mentioned yet at all, I think it's one of the most powerful things about the image, is color. And this is a stunning image from a color standpoint. There is a sense of extraordinary color. What do I mean by that? Instead of pure hues, here hues that are broken. We call that broken color. There are a million different definitions for broken color. One of them is just the idea of taking a hue and then pushing it away from a pure hue by either changing the value of it and or the saturation of it or mixing it with another hue. So you don't end up with these classic primaries from some of the color wheels like a pure red or pure yellow or pure green. You end up with variations of those hues uh, that are either in between because they've been mixed with other colors or they're just understated um, and pushed towards more of a feeling of pigment that's in the earth. And when you see these colors, these are colors that appear more in nature than they do in things uh, that are man-made. And so it's putting us in a different space emotionally than uh, hues that are not broken or pure hues. There's a really beautiful design here based on complementary color. What I want to do is just go to Photoshop real quick uh, so that we can uh, look at this and just use the power of an amazing hue, saturation, value color wheel called Cooler that is inside Adobe Photoshop CS4 and CS5. You can go to Window, Extensions, and then Cooler to get here. And one of the things that we can do here is go to our dropper tool and we could come back, let's say, right here and sample that color and then in Cooler we can click this icon right here and make that our base color and then go to Complementary Color and then we can see, wow, there's this color's complement, and there it is, right there. Let's try this again. You know, let's uh, let's click right in here and add that as a base color, and then look at the complement. And it's this version in here of green that's showing up in the windows. There's this really beautiful sense here of broken hues of red and then natural tones of tan and chocolate and brown being complemented by these really beautiful versions of broken blue and greens, blue-green. And it's just an absolutely fantastic color palette here, here that Kel is working with uh, in this image. Uh, one last thing I want to say about Kel's shot, pretty exciting. Uh, her image was chosen as a finalist for 2010 for Digital Photo Magazine's fourth annual Your Best Shot contest. And we're going to put up a link where if you'd like to, you can go and vote for Cal to win the People's Choice Award for Best Image of the Year, People's Choice. Uh, when you get there, uh, there's a star rating. You'll have to log in. And the way that you can help Cal is just give her image the highest star rating. Like I said, we'll put up a link to that. Congratulations to Cal for that. I can see why her image was chosen. Really stunningly beautiful architectural interior. And at the level of two of the most important design elements in photography, the idea of light and then the idea of color. Big thank you to Kel for sharing this image with us. Big thank you to you for being here. I want to uh, take the time today to wish you Happy New Year. It was a great 2011 for all of you. Thank you so much for all your support. Have a great time this weekend. Be safe. See you again soon on The Mindful Eye.